Thanks, Anand. Okay. Essay writing. These were questions. What makes a good, good college essay? These are the questions that make me cringe when I see questions like this coming. I mean, first and foremost, an essay is something very personal. It's you telling the school what they can't see in your transcript, what they can't see in your activities list, or even in your recommendations. It's the glue that ties everything together. So if you ask me a question about what makes a good essay, I'm like, you tell me what makes a good essay for you. What is it that's about your, your, um, your personality or what you've done that is not showing in the transcript? Where are the emotions not showing? Where is the empathetic side of you not showing in your uh, recommendations or the activities list? For example, you could have gone through a trauma in your life. You could have, uh, like your activities list could be talking about the fact that you've done great at HOSA or in a particular computer science event. What that does not capture is the, how hard the first two months were of that program when you nearly quit. Uh, what it does not talk about is how have you left that club or that uh, program in a better shape than what it was when you got in. What it does not talk about or your transcripts or activities do not talk is a student who was on the fringe of leaving and you mentored and you kept that back person back. Okay, Those emotions that are between the lines, which only you know about, by the way, and maybe your parents and your best friends, those need to go into your personal essay. So do not ask questions like what makes a good personal essay? I mean, it's almost like if you met somebody for a, a date and you only have five minutes in that date, you're obviously not going to flex about your A grade. You're not going to flex about um, the major you're going to do in college, but you're going to talk about something more empathetic, something which your heart bleeds for, right? That's what personal essays are about. How do I write impactful essays to convey a holistic profile for top tier applications? Isn't there inherent stress in these questions? How do I write an impactful essay? Well, you write an essay to who you are as a person. Let them decide if it's impactful or not. As long as you're covering aspects of maturity of who you are, uh, or if as long as you're covering your journey, that what you learned from a process versus the process. By the way, it's, it's some of you are my own students, my personal students, and you know how I emphasize more about very little on the who, what, why, or the who, what, when of an event. It could be a monkey you were playing with for the who, what, when. Doesn't matter. Keep it to 20%, 20-30%. Everything else you write is about the why. What it made you into? Why did you do what you do? Okay, because that's what admissions officers want to know. Just uh, what do you think is the background of college admissions counselors? The not admission, not the admission admissions officers. What's their background? You know, take a shot. Just just tell me what do you think is their uh, what degrees are they from, and how much, how educated are those people? Anybody, just take a shot. You're applying to pre-med to say Rice. Um, they might have a, like a computer degree, computer science. Okay. Who else? And good point. Okay. Uh, they could be like if you're applying as pre-med, they could be physicians. Okay. Who else have a perspective on this? Uh, I feel like they can just be anyone with a degree or who's been through a college process, you've learned about it. Okay. okay. All three of you are wrong. Okay. And understand why you're wrong. Okay. Most admissions officers have a background in liberal arts, humanities, history, English, poli sci. You actually think somebody who's an engineer or a doctor will actually spend time being a part of an admissions office? You think anybody who has a doctorate degree is not going to be, you know, cutting open stomachs and actually sitting over here and, you know, reading applications? Maybe for med school, yeah. You know, BSMD, yeah. 
not for pre-med, not for CS, none of that stuff. So your application has to communicate empathy and responsibility and fiduciary duties of your life to an audience that could be a history major. That's your least common denominator, okay? So if your essay is very technical, talking about how I wrote, I, I debugged this Python code and there was like 500 lines and oh my God, I nearly died doing that bullshit. You know, your chances are, you have you're, you're better chances of going to Las Vegas and making a million dollars than having that application go through, okay? Your application needs to communicate empathetically to the least common denominator, who is a person typically a 27, 28 year old with a history or English background, which means it has to be succinct, it has to be clear, it has to show maturity over time. You're not doing a rara, you're not doing a flex on your CS or your med skills. Save it for master's level programs. That's where the equation changes altogether. Um, sir? Go ahead. Okay, so you said that it needs to be empathic, the empathic. essays. So can we use like humor and other types of emotion other than like conveying the message? Because I tend to write a lot of humorous texts and humorous talks. So I just don't want it to be like full humor, but as I want it to be like a bit of like a bit light, I would say. Well, it should not be light. It, you can have satire. You can have some... Yeah, satire. You can have epiphanies, you can have aha moments, you can have a mea culpa moment saying, I screwed up, damn, how stupid was I? But don't say it that way, right? But there's a way to say it in a... Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is you're meeting somebody who's deciding, is this student, is Priyal going to be in a classroom? Is he going to be an asset to the class? They're not looking for a gesture. They're not looking for somebody who's going to entertain the class. They're looking for somebody who can bring intellectual perspectives they are looking for somebody who can be a helper, a leader who is, uh, and somebody who can impact the overall IQ level of the cohort. Case in point yeah. is the admissions, the, you have people who are, um, who, who do you think the chief uh, dean of admissions reports to? The Dean of Admissions at Stanford. Okay, let's take an example. Let's take Dean of Admissions at Santa Clara University, local university, I'm just giving some names, okay? Or Caltech. What is their bonus depending on what, what, not bonus, I'll come to the bonus through a different point, but a Dean of Admissions who's creating a classroom at Harvard. Who mm -hmm. is, who are his customers? Who is he trying to make happy? Um... Anybody? Does that have to be just Priyo? Who, who, who thinks? Who is their uh, customer? Maybe like bigger like organizations that can like fund the institution. Okay. Well, who else? Anybody else? Students. Okay. Keep going. Well, you both are wrong. Okay. They are pandering to the professors. A dean of admissions or the admissions officer's chief customer, and this is something which I learned at Stanford when I was going through the training under dean of admissions over there, so like seven, eight years ago, I took a class at Stanford. Dean of admissions and admissions officers are mortally scared of professors who come yelling at them saying, what the heck, what kind of a classroom did you give me? These are a bunch of, you know, unempathetic, you know, just rigorous, uh, study oriented jockeys. They're not the CEOs of tomorrow. Why did you give me this class? What were you thinking when you hired these people? They get yelled at, okay? So they are trying to build a classroom of saying, will Professor John Doe like this student? That's all they care about, okay? There's another related statistic called yield. Have anybody of you heard the yield ratio? Do you know what yield is? in terms of admissions. Anybody who's heard this term before? Um, is it I've an heard acronym? It. Say it again. Somebody said what I was about to say. Um, is it an acronym? And if so, uh, how is it spelled? Yield, yield, like, you know, you yield in a car. You, you yield to somebody else. You yield to another, Y-E-Y-I-E-L-D, yield rate. 
What's the yield ratio? All right, I don't, I don't know that then. Yeah. Okay, right. Yield is basically when a college makes an offer to a student and that student accepts the offer. Okay, It's the ratio of people who actually accepted the offer. Yield ratio at Harvard is 90%. Yield ratio at San Jose State University is probably 15%, 15%, okay? Dean of admissions, when they put up, when make offers or build a classroom, they are always trying to up the yield. So they're trying to find people who if they make you the offer, you will accept the offer. Think of this as a game of blind date. You've gone to a club where you've been told you're gonna to meet 20 possible suitors, okay? And you said 20 of them in the line, 20 of you in the line. You only get three minutes with each of them to talk, okay? And now at the end of the talk, you're gonna to move to the next person. You're gonna to move to the next person. Your goal at the end of going through those 20 people is to say, I want out of this 20, I want 18 of them to say yes to me. So I can make a decision which one of those I want to take. But those 18 will make you an, uh, an offer only if they believe they're playing in the league, which means they need to feel that you're interested enough in them that they will actually, if they make an offer, that you will accept it. If you are very clear from the face of it for your application, that you're just applying, you're just here for the heck of it. You really look for the apple, the big apple, Columbia, Stanford. What's gonna happen is Santa Clara University will reject you. They will, it happens all the time, okay? Because the Dean of Admissions, once he's convinced, the AO is convinced that this student is good, but he's overqualified. If I make him an offer, he's not gonna accept it. They will actually reject, reject you. So your job as a student is to maximize your yield. You're playing a game. You're playing a game against time. Saying, if you make me an offer, Stanford, or not Stanford, Santa Clara University, if you make me an offer, I've done so much research about you, about your professors, about your life, about how my life is gonna be over here. If you make me an offer, trust me, I'm coming. Okay, that's the game. Ah. Uh, I have a severe vision disability and I've developed strategies to accommodate it. It's not an intellectual, well, but I should have mentioned in my application. Absolutely. But don't go crazy talking about the fact that you have a vision disability. Empathetic situation, okay, that you have a vision disability. Tell me what did you do despite it? Tell me what did you do, what did you learn from that deficiency in you? You had a vision disability, you probably got bullied for that. You had, there were certain programs that were completely out of touch with you. Did you, did you talk to your senator or your, did, you talk, did, you, did you talk to anybody about putting policies in place to help the disabled or for these people who have these situations? I wanna know those things. I don't want you to just talk about a rara language about how that thing made you suffer. I'm, I'm all for you if you suffered. I'm all for saying, hey, sorry, but I'm not gonna take you to my school because I'm looking for a classroom of people who are gonna help each other. College is a very, very hard place to be in. It's an exponential jump. So if you are going from uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 like this, college becomes like this. Literally you're, you, you take, up, take off. It's like a rocket taking off. 44% of kids who go to college are on medication, depression medication. Now, 20% of them probably have some problem. The rest 20% come there because A, they could not adjust to college. B, they made a decision because the ratings were good of that school and they thought they'll be just fine over there. What they did not realize is they spent what they did not realize is they will spend only 10 hours of their day or their week in the classroom. They will spend 158 hours every week not knowing what to do with their time. Which means it matters where you go because that's four years of your life. It's gonna be just you with a bunch of other crazy people. Those crazy people will be better be crazy like you. They better talk like you, they better think like you. You don't want to show up in a school. You don't want the AO admissions officer making a mistake. And they could make a mistake, God damn it, by reading stuff which you either get from chat GPT or you know you fool them. If you fool them, you've not done yourself a favor. 
you've actually created more trouble for yourself down the line. So an empathetic process is, or a way to think about brainstorming for essays is, think about your values, come up with six to eight dossiers, stories that define you, defining moments of your life. And many of you are my students, you go through this, like when I look at the essays, I throw them out if I don't see the stories behind. I'm not looking for you to give me prompts. And so like, tell me when was the last leadership position you did? That's complete rubbish. Start from something very basic. Like my cohort of students, we make them go through what's called as tickle questions, which is a way to say 150 random questions. Questions like, what's unique between you? What's what's the similarity between you and your dad? Okay, or a question like, um, what's the fav What's the one thing your best friend defines or likes about you and you and, and hates about you? Those are real answers. Okay, start with those basic things. Go through an admissions process, create a synthetic interview between you and an admissions officer. Go through those questions saying, why do you want to do this major? Or, you know, tell me about a time when you had a, you learned something new in the classroom that you were able to apply outside. Some basic questions, it comes from your heart. Take the data you get from those point of views, create your stories, create dossiers out of that, and then apply them to applications. Most students go the other way. They start with personal essays. They start with a common app. That's the worst place to start writing an essay. That's where these kind of questions come about. How do I highlight traits applying to college? That's because I can read. When these kind of questions come, I know the person started his process by looking at that stupid application called the common app. Okay? Where you have those seven questions which adults could not answer. Forget I was expecting a 17 year old to answer those questions. Even I could not answer those questions today and I'm a college admissions counselor. I could go crazy trying to answer those questions, but if I followed a methodical process, okay, I could do it. Case in point is, and again, I, I drink my champagne when I talk about it. This is my classroom material for success coach for the seniors. When they come to us first time, we, ex we understand their financial planning for college. We put a list of colleges for them college research, we'll talk about how you do a research for a college. But unless this part is done, you don't get to start doing brainstorming, okay? You get to tell me, work with me on the list, what's happening? Why is all this coming on the page? Sorry. Okay. We put together the onboarding process, then we go through the colleges list, and then we do brainstorming. Brainstorming starts with understanding what brainstorming is about. We create these what's called the tickle and interview questions. Questions that, you know, which will kindle your curiosity about yourself. So my point of showing you this classroom was, my team does it exactly that way. We create experiences, dossiers. Then we go and take the, those seven, eight unique stories, which don't have a prompt, by the way, on them. There's no prompt that sets those up. It's just unique stories about your life. Then you go into the UCs, do the UC application with us. Then we take you to the common app basics. Then we do the personal essay and supplemental essays for colleges. Okay. Did I have you guys completely lost or what? You're the wrong, sorry. Yeah, if I may add something again, um, I think like to, to I, I that was a lot of inf information at once but to simplify it a bit better i think what uh what the main idea is a lot of you guys need to figure out you know your extracurriculars and your activity list whatever you're passionate about before you even start essay writing because that will give an in and a pathway to actually formulate the ideas the best ideas about you that you can write about you know i i went through the same thing when i was working on my uc piqs I, I was, I just tackled the PIQs immediately and I was like, I, I didn't really know what to do, but Harpo told me, just fill out your activity list. I want to see what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and then we can figure out what to write about. And that was definitely a, a great step for me to write my PIQs. And like most of my PIQs are like directly related to my activity list. So that definitely helped. Alan, tell them where are you off to right now. So you are off to, you have an amazing journey. Where are you going to college now? I'm going to be going to UC San Diego for math and computer science in the fall. 
And uh, yeah, like a lot of my essays, they weren't even, you know, super related to computer science. Only like one of them was because, you know, that's the required essay. But uh, the other ones that were about my personal interests and my passions, that was directly from the activity list. And I wouldn't have been able to write well about that without Herpel's help and his guidance on how to connect the activities list to, you know, my PAQs. I think the one thing that a good admissions counselor, and I don't profess to be too good on you. Guys, can, is... can you guys tell me what is PIQ? Because I, everyone <laughs> may not know, you know. <laughs> so PIQs are, when you apply to the University of California, they ask you personal information questions. So PIQs are P is personal information questions. It's like a personal essay. UCs, which pretty much 90% of people apply to, for UCLA, for UC Berkeley, da, 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 all the list. And especially if you're students in California, you'll apply to them. Is just like you have the common app where you have one personal essay to write, which goes to all your schools. And then you have supplemental essays that go to school specific, right? So every school will get the one common app from you, essay, and the supplementals as a part of, you know, they'll get your activities list, they'll get, they'll get your recommendations and your transcripts. So there's the four things that you get, right? UCs have a different format. UCs don't use the common app. UCs have their own application in which you do not write anything supplemental. You do not write why you want to go to Santa Barbara. You don't write why you want to go to LA. You get to write, you get to choose four 350 word essays, four prompts out of eight and for which you write your answers. So my apologies, I should be very clear about that, okay? And um, thanks, Jagrat, for bringing that up. Now, going back to a methodical process, as um, as Anand just talked about, now Anand was applying as a transfer student. The biggest thing that we could do for him, and I think we succeeded, was we were able to stop him from going down. Uh, he was He was charging at 300 miles an hour. He was writing his essays, da, 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 da. He was already on it. And that's when Jagas reached out saying, I need some help with Anand to make sure everything's in order. The most important thing that Nikki, one of my counselors, did with Anand, and feel free to keep me honest on this, was she slowed you down. She made you do your brainstorming in an authentic, organized way. Uh, you were only applying to the college UCs in that case, so that was one. But uh, if you see the process, the way we develop it, this is the success coach methodology. Um, please do not share it with others. This is unique intellectual property for my business. Uh, I share it with you so you can learn, but uh, this is just for your eyes, okay? Um, we start in June with finalizing the colleges list. This is critical. You do not want your list going on in August, September, October. The biggest mistake rookies do is they add schools last minute when they are nervous, they start, and I was one of them. For my first daughter, I had an external counselor. I didn't trust myself. When it came to July, to November, December, I started throwing in the kitchen sink. That's when you get into a fight with your counselor, saying, why are we changing the list? Spend time upfront in June, saying these are the schools I'm gonna to apply to. Then stick to that list, okay? Trust the system. There's a, there's a method to the madness, which says, we will apply to 20 colleges. Out of them, two will be lottery schools, which is like, you know, sub 5% acceptance. We'll apply to about five or six reach schools, which I have a 10 to 15% chance to get into. I'll apply to five or six target schools where I have a 50% chance of getting in. And here are my five or six safety schools where I have an 80% chance of getting in. There is no 100% in our world, okay? In our world, nothing is 100%. But you can have a a probability of success. The important thing in a list is to break down that list with what you'll finish in November and what you'll do in December, Jan, Feb. After having done 300 plus students over the last six years, I can tell you all my students write garbage from here, December, November, mid-November onwards to January, they write all garbage. And uh, it's because they're burnt out. June, July, August are the three months you have to soak in the sun, to be to yourself, 
to write something good, which is why I need your personal statements for Common App and UC is done between June and July. I cannot tell you how many parents come and fight with me saying, you're putting too much pressure on my child. I'm like, you will thank me for this later. Okay. I had one of my students, she nearly quit on us because we were putting, we were asking her to get all this done here. But we stayed to our, stuck to our guns. And right now she got into UCLA. Okay. She, she rejected UCLA, went to Pomona College. She got into Rice, she got into Wash U, amazing schools. Okay. But I still remember the conversation with her parents. They were like, this is too much. You're asking too soon. Now there is no too soon in our world. I need, creativity has no mother and father. Creativity requires, creativity, you cannot get a baby out in nine days. Your creativity is going to be the lowest in November. And it just goes exponentially worse in December and January. Any questions about these milestones? Okay, but clearly all of you are on your game then. You, you already understand how a, a mentor works, a counselor works, a coach. Coaches are typically in my team, are people who are helping you learn how to prioritize your time. Uh, tutoring help is what we provide in SAT prep if you are still remaining to be done with that. Counselors are people like me in the team who are putting the lists, personal essays, and then there are mentors. Mentors in the team are people who are preparing you for interviews. Do you know what interviews are, guys? What interviews am I talking about here? Who goes for interviews? All right, okay. If you don't want to know about it, that's uh, probably it. college admission interviews. They are college admissions, but they are... Most schools don't offer college admissions interviews, right? So how do you get this? Why do I make it a mandatory step along the way? Because it also helps in uh, preparing for our college applications and essays. It does. It indeed does. That's why one of the things is this, this process starts very early. But the bigger thing is your interview with a college does not have to be only the one where they will offer you an alumni interview or an interview with... Um, you know, like you can actually go to a website or schools and they can actually let you talk to an admissions officer where they'll ask you questions about your interests. You can ask questions about the college. Those are formal interviews. There are alumni interviews where you get to ask questions about um, um, how was your time in college? Why did you want to go to college? Those don't move the dial. But sometimes when you make a call to the admissions office, just a random call, or you send a note to a professor at the school, and you get into a conversation, maybe even get on a call with that professor. And then you mention that uh, that discussion in your essays. Guess who is going to be called right next by the admissions officer? That professor to say, what was the discussion with this student? What was he like, he or she like? Okay, Which is why you need to be ready for interviews. It helps you with brag sheets, which is what one of the students just said, which is great. Helps you with putting your why major answer very clearly. It also helps you with why that particular college. This helps you with getting around the yield. Remember the yield ratio I was talking about. Okay. All right. I, I get carried away with these conversations, but colleges in general look for these four things. When they talk about intellectual curiosity, they're not just talking about your grades. Grades are very clear. You got a four dot or a three dot or in some subject. They are looking for recreational learning, top grades, but they're also looking for how, why did you take certain challenging coursework in school that you did? And that comes through your essays. The what made you do a certain thing? Uh, what did you learn that you took outside the class? And that doesn't have to be just in a summer program. That could be in just things you did. Your character, the character and admiration. And by the way, um, did you know UCs do not accept recommendation letters? University of California has no recommendation letters, which means a very important part of your application, which is like this, this leg of your application is gone which means that onus comes on you when you write your personal essays to communicate a point of view that they will understand. 
So when you write just rara stories of what you did and what did you not do and why you want to go to college, QC is going to tear that application and throw it away. They need to see a third person perspective of yourself. So UCPIQs, personal information questions are special, very special compared to personal essays and supplemental essays where you talk about. I want to come to BU for these three reasons. Okay. The right fit is super critical for them. Understand that the good schools have already arrived. Take a school like Rice or Wash U or take Georgia Tech or you know Stanford. They've arrived. They already have reached a level. They know what they can do for you to take you from one level to the other. What they're looking for is students who already have a sense of where they want to go and they believe that yeah, this student could really help get help from us. Not for any philanthropic purpose, but they're looking to build the next level of CEOs, next level of uh, affluent people who will pay back a lot of donations to their school. So, and how does that happen? If they can play a primordial or a, an important role in growing that student from where they are right now to where they will reach, that student will come back and give them donations. Like the school I went to and did engineering in India, I even forget the name of that school because that school didn't do jack to take me where I am. Well, guess what? How much money do they get from me every year? Nothing, right? And But if a school is influential in helping you, you will give money to them, okay? Authenticity of your applications, compelling essays, clear vision and goal and vision for life. Tell me of ways that we do not show authenticity. How can we make our application uninteresting? Like you take a case of a student, Boy Scout, Eagles, you know, done the Eagles Boy Scout, Hosa, Deca, President of Club, da 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 da, all that, all the rubbish, right? They've done, gone through, they've, they've clicked, checked off all the boxes. What's the one thing they um, did that did not show? Talking about making their essays a sob story. Okay, part of it. How do you make it unauthentic? Well, a sob story is, nobody wants that, by the way. Nobody wants to see, nobody has time to listen to your sob stories about life. Uh, there, there are a lot of cliche topics which a lot of students repeat in their essays. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any cliche topic in the top of my head right now, but yeah. You uh, have one, to, uh, it can be unauthentic. One way I think it can be unauthentic is because even if you're like a club or press, like if you're president of a club, there are like so many other high schools where there are so many other students who are also presidents of the, that same club. And if you just like say what your responsibilities were, it's the same for every other high school. That's very well said. Um, there are 4,000 colleges in this country. There are 40,000 high schools. Each high school has about 10 solid clubs, which means they have 10 solid presidents, 10 solid vice presidents. Think of the life of the admissions officer. They go crazy reading this Rara stories. I'm the president of this club. I did this. I did a fundraiser and I stood for this thing. I did same rubbish everybody writes. For lack of better words, again, not being insulting to the students. I mean, I empathize with your life. I empathize with what crap you have to deal with. The single one reason they get into trouble is they use chat GPT, okay? My counselors, especially like I was having a conversation yesterday with Anu, one of my counselors, and I said, I'm okay with my students using chat GPT to, to rant your ideas into the, uh, you know, we, we record our meetings through a tool called Otter. Um, and I said, I'm okay with my students going through that process and then uh, creating, you know, vignettes out of it through the rant and then applying chat GPG to you know, stretch some of the details to give you details. And she was like, Harpa, you're going down a very slippery slope. You're saying there are some things that are, that the students can do, but that is a case of death. So she aggressively disagreed with me and she works for me, right? Which is fine. But I do a lot of chat GPT work in my work 
And that was my argument to her. And she's like, you're not applying to college. You're, you're an educated professional. So you're, you're doing different stuff. So take it for what it's worth. It's a tool that's there for you. Use it for the right reasons. Chat GPT based essays lack a soul. They, I can read and like people like Anu, they can, she will from a mile away say this is Chat GPT. And the moment they say that, they don't have to call you out on that. What's gonna happen is they will not be moved by the essay. Because the essay, essay is so smooth, it is so clean, it is so cute. Rubbish, it doesn't sell, okay? Do not fall for what's called as a Costco essay. The Costco essay is a very famous essay that was written like 20, 30 years ago and all these schools hold it like the echelon of, of life. If you read that stupid essay, I'm yet to find somebody who actually said, oh my goodness, I wish I could write like the Costco essay guy. Okay? It does not happen. Google it yourself. Look at the Costco essay and go through the stress of feeling that, is this a good essay? The problem is there's a system set up around you to tell you you're, you're screwed basically. That's what they're here to tell you. It's not true though. I'm here to tell you that it's not true because I talked to admissions offices, I worked with them, okay? Okay. Last year, I got out of my 33 students, my senior, rising senior, my senior year students, nine of them made it to Berkeley, okay? So my hit rate was close to 30%, okay? Of getting into Berkeley. I got students in UCLA, and number of students into Northeastern. Mitch was through the roof. Carnegie Mellon was two. Georgia Tech was many, several. Urbana Chamber was again through the roof. The one thing for, especially the UC that we did different last year, we had a UC external reader on our team who vetted all the applications. And it was very interesting the kind of things this person crossed the essays on, saying, no, not letting the essay go through. Now, third party essay or third third reviewer in UC Parlay is, and this happens across the board, so you need to understand this as a system, which is you have two readers who read side by side the application, okay? The one person reads your essays and your transcripts, the other one reads your activities list and your recommendations. At the end of reading that stuff, they go this way or this way, okay? If both go this way, then the application goes to the next level. If one goes this, if both go this way, then the application is rejected. If one goes this and the other one goes up, that application automatically goes to a third person. There's no discussion. In fact, even the decision-making process, they don't talk to each other about the decision they're making. They just discuss what they find interesting about the student, and then they move. They both independently say yay or nay. If one says yay, one says nay, that goes to a third party, third person who's a much more senior reader, who's been in their shoes. If he says yay, it goes to a third level, that next level, the person who said no gets overruled, okay? That person who goes yay or nay, that third person works for us, my company, okay? The single difference that person was able to show us was, uh, let me bring that up. I was asking my counselors yesterday for the that spreadsheet or that presentation we show to our students. Where is it gone? Where are you? I know, here it is. Apply this iceberg test, guys, to your application. I don't know if I'll meet you again, what will happen, you know, we'll be together or not. I'm happy to, you know, coach anybody in the future, whatever help you need. But your essay, which is the veneer that connects the application together, okay? There's a top part and there's a bottom part. Top is what we call as the who, what, when. The why and how you grew is the bottom part, okay? This part needs to be very solid, especially for the UCs. They will 
they will basically throw your application out before you know about it if your um, if this part the bottom is not heavy the top is generic what is this about who's in the story what happened where did this happen and the boring stuff you could write about a monkey like i said it doesn't matter it's going to be just fine it's this bottom why do you want to share this story okay Anu's not done a good job of writing this clearly. She's made it actually very. I hate the like the, the fonts and it's hard to read this stuff. This sharing of perspectives, insights, reflections, aha moments, and lessons learned. Take this as your comb. Some of your parents on this call. I don't know if you have counselors or not, but. When your child writes an application and provides it to you, look for these things. Feelings, emotions. Did you, did you write it for your best friend and does it resonate with your authentic voice? Does it follow the prompt roadmap? Is, the, is he actually answering the question? Believe it or not, there are like 70 to 80% students do not even write answering the prompt. They will actually miss out on parts of the prompt just because of convenience or they were like, yeah, I got it. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So we can go into this in more details. Fuel Success Coaches YouTube website. Anu is ranting about this a lot. She has videos explaining this topic. But uh, I tend to use this, the STAR method, to create your baseline story. So create your experiences dossiers, create the um, basic uh, vignettes of your stories, and then apply this formula on it okay once you apply the star situation to it like why does it matter okay that's after that you can start applying the perspectives insights reflections this by the way is what you see is used instead of your recommendation letter because typically recommendations talk about these things a teacher or somebody who you trust you create a brag sheet for them telling them all these things about you and then they Either use what you provide to them or they create their own version or in some cases they don't write any of that which is when you don't get into a school okay um any questions so far i've, I've ranted a lot how much time is it wow 54 minutes i'm tired now guys um was there anything specific that i missed or uh, that you were looking for for me to answer talked about this this is what my company does for students okay which will we have tutoring subjects for help because your grades matter 70 percent of your application for the ucs is your grade not just the grade the quality of the grade what what ap's did you take not the number of ap's they cut you off at four ap's okay so well, what ap's you took matters um, um sir um, okay so um i'm actually new in this country so it's been a year since i came here and the subjects my school took all of them are considered on level here but back in india they used to consider it like they didn't have any ap's so Correct. they just took the tough level courses in just uh, in the name of an on level so because of that, it actually has affected a bit to my transcript. So if I explain in the in my college application, if that was the case, would it like hurt or like? It won't hurt, but typically what you want like is... It would, like it would hurt my application or it would mm -hmm. like infect... Well, if you're giving, there's an additional information section in the Common App, which has another 600 words to write. Obviously, don't use up that much space, but you could say that I did these subjects, which were equivalent to this. But unfortunately, my counselors here do not know enough about the Indian system, so it's possible they've mm -hmm. not done justice to my evaluation. But I want you to know the reason I could take on, say, for example, AP Chem, is because I had my, I nailed it with Chem honors in the eleventh or the tenth, which was not showing. But come by, mm -hmm. you know, send me a note. 
I'm happy to look at the application and give you some targeted perspective on that, okay? Yes, sir. So big thing is like a summer program guidance. Uh, most of you are in the Jagat's program this year or my program, the one I teach in computer science uh, to the team. Uh, mentoring or one-on-one -on -one support matters a lot. So having a mentor who you can just reach out over WhatsApp and a counselor you can work with day in, day out is super critical. These five months are super, super critical in your life, okay? This is what we call as the breakdown of the six areas of your application. The area we haven't talked much about is demonstrated interest, which is kind of the area you go through with your summer programs, with your intellectual curiosity, with your activities list. But this needs to be fairly, it doesn't have to be so like, like last night I had somebody in my office talking about, we're really concerned she doesn't have enough volunteer efforts done or her volunteer activities are very low. How do we change that? And I was like, so ready to just throw them out of my office. So I was like, do not ask stupid questions to me. Like, I mean, demonstrate, it, like a school can see through. Do not disrespect the process by trying to say, oh my God, he doesn't have it. What can we put that look good? You do you, you do what you think is good for you. Like, you know, this one student uh, on the trail I go to decided to do a write up about that trail about certain insects he saw over there. And uh, he found some, some rare species which was about to die where he petitioned to the county or to the city. I don't know what happened about it, but it looked nice. Those things look, those show up as activities you did, okay? Um, but this is the breakdown. So this is a breakdown for Ivy League schools, typically. Now they, they care 55% of your quality of your GPA and the AP. UC will have about 70% application. But ultimately, when you look at all these, all this is in your application. Remember this one. This is what Tosca, she, one of my mentors, she goes to Harvard. She said the admissions officer has a, when they say holistic focus, they're not looking for a kitchen sink. They're not looking for like, a, he did HOSA, he did Model UN, he did mock trial, and he did AP Chem, and he had, uh, you know, great recommendations. That's not called a holistic application people, okay? How, who are you? Were I, was I able to figure out from reading all this, did all these points firstly connect to each other? How did you make me feel, me as an admissions officer? Did I learn something new about life? Did you make me a little more intelligent? Think of it as a kumbaya, it's a partnership. They're giving you nine minutes of their life. Provide content which makes them a little smarter as well. Always remember the admissions officer could be at four o'clock in the evening, not having had a piece of coffee, okay? And they are meeting with you at that time. And what happens now is that if you are at that phase, the discussion, or you're meeting them when they are low and down, they're not looking for rara messages. They're not looking for you to talk about how great you are. They're looking for that mia kalpa moment. They're looking for scars on your back. They're looking for learnings because they want to learn something new as well. Give them that opportunity. Do not deny an admissions officer who's giving you nine minutes of his life the time to learn something unique about you, about life. Okay, and watch, watch how the numbers manifest later. Okay. I see it every year. Okay, These, yeah, go ahead. At the last slide. Um, so you mentioned that this is what it looks like for Ivy Leagues and a majority of other colleges. But when you're looking at the um, UC system, they don't look at demonstrated interest or rec letters, right? Um, and then neither do they look at the SAT or ACT. So how is this split for um, the UCs? So good question. Firstly, do not try to jam it in. Like I have students who say, I know UCs don't take it, but I'm going to put it in the essay somewhere. I'm going to put it in the activities list, the word SAT and ACT. Do not make that cardinal mistake. They do not want to say, do not try to influence them by being a you know, smart chap, figuring a way to put it in. Yes, they don't want to see your, um, they don't want to see a recommendation letter. They don't want to see this, but they do want to see these four, right? So if you could, you talk about in your your GPA and your, what you learned along the way in your personal essays. If you could reflect on some of those extracurriculars, which are just who, what, when, by the way, right? The who, what, when comes in the extracurricular, what you did, but personifying it to to some able talking about your what you learned out of it comes here. You could easily just in this strata over here, 
you could communicate everything they need to know. Does that make sense or did I? No, it's feel free to disagree. It's okay. I can no, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, um, my point is, do that made sense? Um, I just wasn't aware. Do UCs look at demonstrated interest? They they or might not look at demonstrated interest in terms of a, a campus, but they oh, okay. absolutely they will want to see for a particular subject. You know what? Uh, like like I have this one. So I have, so I had an, like, this one's a little bit more personal, but mm -hmm. I am in a club where I've done competitions at different UCs. Mm -hmm. Does that consider, is that considered as demonstrated interest? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm trying to find that one slide which I had for, ah, I can't find it right now, but I have a slide which actually goes through the eight <laughs> PIQs, which, so I'm, I'm an engineer, I'm very, I'm a control freak. Um, there are certain PIQs you have to answer when you're in my team. And the students come and say, no, I don't want to answer this question. Like, uh -uh. They say four out of eight, but these two out of the eight have to be answered. Yeah, because those are talking about the why major and talking about something that the UCs care about, which we know. We know from our data details. So you don't, anybody who says, I can take any four out of the eight, you're doing yourself a disservice. Even though UCs tell you, my humble opinion, it's a plot. It's it's a, it's a catch. Think of it, they've got 200,000 applications that they're looking at. They are, and they're not, <laughs> anyway, whatever, but. So this is the key dimensions. Spike your activities. That's very important, spike it. And I say spike means don't just write the, I'm the, I'm the president of this club. Okay? Talk about every line has to, peel the onion more. You have to talk about something which they can learn interestingly more. Remember this thing, the activities list is, if you uh, if you were the admissions officer, would you rather look at a wrong, long recommendation letter or a long rant you know, of a personal essay? Or would you rather make your decisions very quickly based on the transcript and the activities list? My gut says I would rather do the just the activities list and the transcript because that's easy in my mind. I don't honestly care for you as much. I'm an admissions officer, I'm getting paid 50 bucks an hour, whatever I'm getting paid, not a whole lot of money. I care for you, but help me care for you. So the activities list is critical. So I'm very, in, half the time I throw back the activities list I get back from my students because my counselors will make it. I'm like, uh-uh, it's not connecting, okay? An early action plan, meaning more like 70% of applications have to be submitted by 15 November. 70% and I mean it, people, okay? And I'm not talking about your safety schools. I'm talking maybe your target schools, but I'm talking definitely your reach schools and your lottery schools have to be done this time. Course selection, even for senior year matters. Course selection of what you're doing in the summer in before senior year, which is now, matters a lot. Tutoring if you need help. Get, take some tutoring. I have tutors on my team. Finalize your college list. This will matter so much down the line and then make sure your personal essay is completed. Prep for the interview. Go through a process, a synthetic process with a sibling or somebody who can, who can stim simulate an environment of an admissions interview for you. Okay? We have a whole template for that as a process. Talked about this. This is... I think it takes about 40 hours for any student to complete the counseling they need from an admissions counselor. Kind of gives you a template of, you know, the hours you want to spend with a counselor putting together a plan of prioritized list. So this is in chronological order, okay? You first do your strategy planning. What's my plan end to end? Okay, when do I want to finish? When your list going to be finished? When is the deadline? Progression report, how am I going to communicate to my counselor and buy back? Remember, the counselor is not just working with you. You're not the world for him, him or her. They have a lot of things to happen. For them, it's a business. Okay. Um, strategic guidance for early decision, early action, spiking, brainstorming for the essay. This is where I put, look at this, brainstorming, the personal essay is 12 hours. Big, opaque piece. This is where the magic happens. Then we complete the common app review. Then we start supplementals. Look at this. We do not even start supplementals before that. When we put a prioritized list of colleges, 
we do go through the process of saying why that college, why a specific thing, but that's it, okay? Do you know what appeals are, guys? Appeal essays. Anybody know what an appeal essay? Yeah, Anybody? you might get deferred or you might get like an offer that's um, not as good as you hope in terms of um, tuition. And you can write an essay back to them good. with your appeal. So there are two parts to it. Good point, Mahi. Okay. There is a letter of continued interest, which is typically a very short note saying, hey, we've deferred you from this round. You applied to early action. We're going to move you to regular decision. But that's a fairly short note. Appeal is you've been rejected. Now, UCs have that process. All the UCs have it. Okay. Many public schools have that process. Private schools don't have it. But you have a chance at an appeal. Start planning for your appeal, but you will get rejected from schools. I've had students who got rejected. We put an appeal, they got through. Works every year, okay? So that's important. And negotiations work. If you've planned the list of colleges the correct way, if you've planned your, your early action, early decision, early decision two in a particular way, there is, you know, again, meet me, I'll talk to the math behind it. There is a way to create negotiations, to create a frenzy between, between colleges. They will negotiate, they are businesses. They want you for a reason, okay? We talked about this. Um, I'm I'm pretty much done with my. Uh, what else did I have? Uh, did I talk about quality of personal branding? How do I? I think I've talked about pretty much. Um, recommendation strategy. This just comes down to a brag sheet, guys. A recommendation strategy is built. What is a recommendation? A teacher who you met, have worked with for the past a year and a half on average, okay? And that person is talking good about you. I can assure you that person doesn't know, remember you at all. You think you're the pet of the class, but the teacher has a life of her own, her or his own, okay? They do not remember stuff about you, what you did in the classroom. If you will just tell them, can you write me a recommendation? They're like, sure. Now you've done a huge disservice to yourself because that person does not remember your personal stories. Doesn't remember what you did in the class especially. So you have to mention those things through a brag sheet. I have a question regarding the yeah, recommendation letter. Mm -hmm. So do students get to see what the actual content of the uh, recommendation letter or it's just sealed and sent to the universities directly? I'm very much unaware of these things. You have an option to see it, but uh, what do you think? You have an option to see it, but the schools will know that you saw it. Would you rather do okay. that? Is that bad? I, I have no clue. No, I'm asking you back. It is bad. Right? So because... Arpal, Arpal, can I comment on that? Please. Because uh, I've been writing these letters past uh, 10 years or so, mm -hmm. and uh, as a recommender what I expect from the student. So again, as you pointed, uh, you know, just don't say that, uh, write me a letter. I usually, usually I, I work with them one month writing proper letter because I take this is very serious, basically. So I tell them, don't tell me one week before, tell me at least one month before. Okay. Then I work with you, by the way, the way I do it, this is this is what I do it. I tell, I make them write the first draft, actually, a letter. Then I don't use as is. By the way, I use that point because I need to know what you're accomplished by working with me or working outside of me, basically. Then I use the draft, make my own personalized letter because if I had to write to ten people, like imagine whomever you're asking, you are not the only one asking. Okay. At least 10 more, or even in the high you know, school, maybe there are 50 more they have to write it. So imagine they have to personalize these letters. So therefore, give them the space they need it and give them the information they need it. This is, the onus is on you. How best the letter will be written, it depends on how much information you provide to the recommender. So this is how I work, and I've been doing this, and. I always give best letter, but also obviously how best they work with me as well. I include those personalized notes. So, so that's what I see as a recommender. Okay. I just wanted to add on to Good that. Good point. Thank Who's... you, Jagat. Yeah. 
Usha, back sense. to your question about sure. should we go blind or not? Hundred percent, it should go blind. Hundred, not 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 ninety percent. I don't want a student who sends Jagat a note to read what Jagat wrote. Because if if I if I can if, I, if the student can read what he wrote, then that's of no use. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, I don't. Makes sense actually. My, I don't share I don't my understand. final letter with the student. I usually don't share it. I only, they only see the first draft, but they never get to see the final draft because it's a confidential. The letter is supposed to be confidential, basically. Okay. But I make them do the first draft mainly because I need to know what they are, actually. So that was the reason I make them write the first draft. But final draft, or final letter that is sent, they never get to see it, actually. So. So, I like the approach, Jagat. Yes, yes. Parting note on the recommendation letters. I typically have a six step process that they go through with me. Their brag sheet has to comp has six parts to it for every teacher they send. Three parts are common, which says, what major, what do I want to do in life and stuff. But out of the six questions, there are two which are very generic that they answer. But there's one very important question. If you're writing a letter to John, if John Doe is a professor that you've agreed, has agreed to write your recommendation, why did you choose John Doe? That question is pivotal. Saying, there were 50 teachers in the school and outside that I could have chosen from. I chose you, John Doe, to be my recommender because you know these three things about me which nobody else knows about. I have learned these things from you which nobody else knows about. Okay? I want you to tell the admissions officers these three things about me. Please be blunt. Because if you, at the end of the day, if you don't sell yourself, who will? Your teacher does not. Jagat gets 50 letters to write. He's not going to personalize for everyone unless they give him enough material to what his point is, right? But that point has to be in a very structured way, almost to a point where, yeah, this is, I'm going to hold back some. <laughs> I'm a little, it's my job to get students in, okay, not to keep them out. Okay, so there are ways to, Influence the influencer without letting them realize that if I tell that to Jagas right now, he's going to get corrupted. So I'll, I'll hold that back. Okay. Um, the Thank you, Harpal, for answering my question in detail. Yeah, I mean, look, this is, this is very dear to me. I mean, I've seen enough students suffer. They cry in my office and they... They go through too much. They, this is not fair. Let's be very blunt about it. This process is horrible. But if you play the game by the right rules, if you take it as a challenge, I can tell you, God damn it, you will come out 10x smarter than I did when I went to college. Now your parents and me, we did not have to go through this. That's not always the best thing. You have an opportunity to go through this for lack of better words, crap, okay? but. If we can simplify the process, if I can put an arithmetic equation around this problem with giving the right weightage to the dimensions, and if I create create that n-dimensional quadratic equation, if you will, it's not a quadratic then, it's, it's beyond that, okay? If I can create that equation for you, your, you will sizzle for life. So take this application process as something which will build you, right? So anyway, open questions. Uh, what's the time now? We have 15 more minutes. Open rant. Quick questions, if not, then uh, maybe I can add on to her. Uh, uh, why this application process is very important. Uh, you you all should take it very serious, and uh, it brings you a lot of confidence out of you actually, and uh, uh, the kind of admissions you get into it. You it builds a different personality out of you actually. Yeah. So therefore, this next four five months take it and do best job because you spent 12 years doing your best in high school that is one and next five six months how you tell your story is the another one so therefore take it very serious and you want to tell project yourself in the best possible way so take help where you need to okay don't be overconfident and not showing it to uh, appropriate people 
and, and getting your best application in front of the college admission uh, team because this is very important, okay? So therefore, take it very serious. Parents who are on the team, you know, make that, en en enable that process for them, okay? Whether you put your own time or you get help from outside and it's important they go through this process in, in a very professional way and uh, it's important and always most of the parents like me they are new to this education system so therefore so the 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 children are going through this process all the first time so therefore it seems important you take appropriate help to make that happen and and uh, uh, that's very good actually okay any questions Thanks. guys from anybody let's open up now we have 15 more minutes 13 more minutes, like 12 more minutes. So ask any questions that I can answer. That, again, there's no, there's, no, there's no bad question. This session was done for you. This is your time. You earned it. Okay, ask questions. There's no bad question. How many because uh, uh, because there's a silence here, maybe I'll start with it. So, so no, purple. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could tell one big difference between UC and Common App. And uh, I know here we have a mixed uh, population of the students here. Yeah. So, if you could highlight one major difference between UC and Common App, where uh, at least the people outside of California would benefit out of that. So. The biggest difference between the two is the lack of a recommendation letter. And I've told you guys earlier about this, how to get around it. Remember the recommendation is, is the kingmaker for all your applications in general. UCs do not allow for the recommendation letter, which means those PIQs have to communicate a point of view very uniquely. The other big difference is the activities list. You have, in the common app, you get to write only 10 activities at 150 characters each. UCs allows you to do 20 activities, 350 characters each. Okay, will you write all 20? Somebody give me an answer. You have an opportunity to write 20 activities. How many would you want to write? Take a, throw a shot at me, come on. You know. Maybe the ones that matter most. How many? How many, Vache? Maybe like five. Keep going. Okay, anybody else? I mean, if I you have only ten. five, then you have five. Fine. Ten, okay. What else? Probably the most... Uh, top three. Top three. It's the number is typically between seven or eight. Um, the number being just you need to put in about seven or eight activities. Activities which are congruent to your PIQs that have synergetic data. You write the who, what, when in the activity. Well, you have 350 characters, guys. That's like six sentences. Okay. You could write something good over there. And remember this thing because that dude who's reading your application might not might overlook something in the PIQ, but he will not overlook the activities list. But writing 20 is a mess. I have students who fight with me. Like, I've got 24 to write. How do I put it in 20? I'm like, you're an idiot. Okay. Crunch it down, get it down to eight or nine. There are not, there's only so much work you've done which matters. Just because you were the cheerleading, you know, you were a part of the group for one year is not important. Just because you did choir for a year but didn't really make an impact over that, that let it go. Your brand is about a few things, okay? Then you have to put your brand forward. You just talk the two things about you. When I say, remember these two things about me, like how do politicians build a brand? They talk in one, two, and threes, right? Then they repeat the message again and again. It's about building your brand. Brand is not about 20 things and throwing in a kitchen saying, oh, by the way, I have a 21st for you. They'll forget you. Remember on the, this is an important test. And this is what a very important admissions officer who's one of my, my mentors said, when they finish reading the application, they will write three lines on your folder. They actually walk around with physical folder. They print out the application. On the back of your folder, they'll write three lines about you. After that, they will never take your name. 
there's a student X who did these three things. The admissions committees fight. They go into meeting rooms, like war rooms saying, hey, what does your student have? My student A has these four things. Oh, yours has this? Sit down. No, no, you're, you're arming me, the admissions officer with data to make decisions. This is real stuff. There are movies on this stuff showing how admissions officers fight with each other. You want them to be your champion. How will somebody be your champion? They remember those three things about you. The girl who did, who helped this one student, the one who had this problem or came from behind, the hero story. They'll remember the stories. That's it. Okay, questions. List, I can see a bunch of people in the view. I'm gonna go in the chronological order with raised hands. Sahaj. Hi, um, thank you for the presentation today. My question was, um, uh, suppose you already used something on your activities list on the Common App. Is it okay if you write that same thing again uh, in your supplemental essay? Or something similar regarding that? You could, because your activities list only can take 150 characters, you mm -hmm. could not write in details, obviously. So you, write, you, write, you wrote more about the who and what and why. But when you amplify that message in your supplemental, it's a phenomenal thing, it's a fair ask. What you don't want is writing the same story uh, in three different forms in the same application to the same professor saying, you know, like I had this one student last year, he was obsessed by middle college about his application because he made it into middle college and what he did. And he had these two clubs, like an entrepreneur club and a robotics club. Every application, anything and everything, he would just want to write about that. That lead, that reeks of bad brainstorming processes. If we did not give you enough brainstorming, something went wrong, stuff, and we had to pull him back from there. Okay, so the answer to your question is, write enough, Think in a chronological order. They're looking at your transcripts, they're looking at your activities list, then they're looking at your recommendation, then they're looking at PIQ and the personal essays, whatever you're writing, personal and supplemental. How are they gonna think? If they see rep repetition, they're gonna hate you because you're making them read, okay? Stuff which did not make sense, okay? And uh, like, since on the activities, you can only have 10, right? Suppose you, have, you also have one extra thing that you really wanna talk about but you didn't have space to put it. Like, it's good, but it's not like top 10 for you. C can you write that on your supplemental? I wouldn't. And I would not. I mean, if it was not important enough to you that it made the top 10, okay, think of it. Now you're going to surprise me in the personal essay or with a supplemental with something hold altogether new. You do not want to rise from the ashes, bacha. You want to stay brand. We're doing brand management here. Brand management is about few things and hitting it through the wazoo, okay? Not about, oh, oh, one more thing. Oh, I have students in their personal essay. It makes me cringe. They're writing about one particular thing, okay? They're ranting, so let's take a rant. I was in a leadership position and things went bad and I turned it around and everything. And the last conclusion essay part, they actually write about something else, completely different, saying, I, and this is what happened. And now you left me high and dry as a reader saying, okay, firstly, I was in a flow with you. You started something completely new. You didn't complete it. It's kind of not exactly what you asked, but do not try to jam in the 11th. Have a counselor work with you. Have your parents look at your application. Do not, it's a poem. It has to read like a poem, okay? Yeah, but like my top five, like I'm not trying to have more than five research on my activities and my top five researchers compared to cell science are better. Like I have three at Harvard, two at MIT and one at Rice. So I'm not trying to have more. And I was thinking I could instead put uh, the cell science one on a supplemental I'll say, would that be fine? You're the boss. I, I told you what I could. You know, I didn't uh, uh, Harpo, let's move on. You know, there yeah. are four more we need to finish that. Yeah, go ahead. But yeah, call me Seth. Call me later, we can talk about it, okay? Okay, uh, Niren asked something directly to me, or I feel like working with you. Okay, all right, thanks. Yeah, Niren, stay in touch, okay? I'd love to talk to you. Okay, Bacha, Priyal, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir, okay, so achievements. When I have, a, this is a personal thing, but I actually have a lot of achievements <laughs> from Olympiads and Spellbees. Okay. And like, <laughs> I certificate love the way you're like... medals. <laughs> I'm like, I have a lot of achievements. What do I do? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to ask that, do I put it in the transcript part where it, 
talks about all the study stuff or do I put it in the activity stuff where can it be considered as an activity I did? So there's a additional information section um, in every application. You can put it in there. Okay. If it's not an activity, it's if it's just a rara moment, like UCs love those raras. This is something called honors. You can put it in the honors section. Okay. But mm -hmm. reach out. I'll, I'll I'll tell you how you can fix that. Okay. 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 Uh, Akshita. Yeah. This is also a very personal question. But if you're from like a different like immigration status, like if you're not a citizen or green card, mm -hmm. are there any specific like scholarships or financial aid that students can get for colleges? So we didn't talk financially at all in this session and uh, uh, in general, and my apologies. I saw your note yesterday on this as well. So um, H H4 students, you, are you in California or where are you based, Akshita? California. So for you, for California, you'll be considered in-state because your parents are living here for the last two years, I'm assuming. So they are, you have yeah. in-state privileges for UCs for you. Okay, So you'll be treated in-state. For everybody else, you will be treated as an international student or out of state. You have to make that decision. You want to go as international or out of state. Out of state has its own, um, is is okay to go out of state. But uh, if you go in as a foreign student, you have internships that you can avail of. It's a little more expensive to come as a foreign student versus an American, for like a California native applying over there. So every school has their process a little differently, differently done. So for example, if you were applying to Rice University in Texas, and uh, they would treat you, it's better to go as a foreign student because their chances are better to get in because they are they have a quota for foreign students. Plus you get certain internship opportunities with those hours, which you could not av avail for as an H4. I'm not a lawyer, talk to a legal person about this, but I've, I've helped many of my students with this content. Okay? Okay, all right, thank you. Shreya Kalu, please. Yes, I, um, so I have two questions. Okay. The first one is, um, about your extracurriculars. So when you're having extracurriculars, and then one thing you mentioned was um, it's better if they're all targeted toward a certain like um, field or uh, what you like to do. But if you have it, if you have multiple extracurriculars like that are all from different fields, like political science or health or tech, um, how would you loop that? Like, would, would that be still okay <laughs> to use in your essays and stuff? I am so glad you asked that. And if you had walked away saying, with my perspective saying, no, keep it all like, you know, all, all study and focus on one thing makes Shreya a dull girl. We don't want that. We want to show your flamboyance. If you're into choir, if you're into music, if you're into hockey, if you're into tap dancing, I want to hear all those stories because trust the process. I mean, there's a reason why you did these things in your life. You felt right. a connection to them. And that's more important than what the college thinks. If you come across authentically saying, so for example, a tap dancer, t t tell me about two of your activities or random activities which you do. Let's, let's talk. Um, so one is I sing, not competitively. Okay. And then the other one is I'm in Mawa UN. I've been in that for a while now. Yeah. Um, and they're not in, in no way related to the field that I'm going into. And what field are you going into? Probably pre-med. Okay, well, there is a way, absolutely there's a way to connect all of them together. Singing gives you the ability to communicate your zone. You find your element and you find the grounding in your singing and your, your ability to communicate a certain way. When you when I read a poem which I sing, I find the I can appreciate the clarity and the conciseness of what I'm reading. Okay. When I go in front of model UN, I love learning how countries fight and looking at the political angle which is so important in even in medicine and stuff. You said pre-med, right? That's what you had. Yeah. You had it, right? And then we talk pre-med. There is a way to connect all those things. Okay. You just need to meet the right person, either a counselor or your family, or listen to rants from me. Just subscribe to my my YouTube channel. I I, I give a lot of these rants over there. Okay, so we'll talk more. Okay. Okay. Anything else? You had two questions. You said right. Yes. Right. The second one is um, a little more specific to the UCs. Um, can you put national merit commendations or finalists under an honors and award category for these? 100%. Pieces? 100%. Okay, if perfect. they're giving you a chance to do a rara moment and they love honors, they love. Okay. I'm, in fact, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, just give me something, man. I just need to put three, four honors in there. That's important. Sometimes the, the number of honors you do, you, you're playing a system, guys. I mean, there are 200,000 right, right. 200, applications coming in. If you have written only one honor and the other guy wrote three, chances are your honors are not going to get the weightage that you wanted. Okay? Cool. Okay, Anything thank else? Thank you. You good? Okay. So let's take your hand down and then let's move. To, oh, no. What, okay. Did I put hand down? Yeah. Okay. Gordon, go ahead. 
Uh, hi. Um, so I'm actually from the state of Washington. So uh, if I applied at UCs, I would be considered out of state. Yes. So is there um, like any sort of tips or recommendations that you have for out of state students um, as like approaching the UC application? The UCs look at foreign applications or out of state applications very favorably. Um, the the travesty of the situation is most foreign students do not apply to UC Davis or UC Irvine or even Santa Barbara. They all want to apply to Davis and not, they only apply to Berkeley and LA, which is hard to get into. But if you apply with a decent GPA to UC Davis, um, even UC Irvine or UC Santa Cruz, the acceptance rates are through the roof. Okay. okay? Right. What else? Uh, uh, I have a question so help, about yeah. the activity section. Yes. So if you have like certain hobbies and they're not really like leadership positions or like really academic, academically inclined, would they still count? So you have activities which are more academically come inclined, not less as... academically inclined. Less so for academic. example, like playing an instrument or composing music. That's right. Absolutely fine, because in fact, that's showing a new side of you because you're, look, you don't have to be apologetic over the fact that you don't, you're not a nerd in a particular subject. That's okay. It's perfectly fine. In fact, at the end of the day, it's your transcript speaks more about your academic progress than anything about a summer program or anything you sign up for. So in fact, the more you double down and talk about that, that, you know, I, I made a conscious decision to not go for a summer camp and stuff a, because my family didn't have that kind of money. And I, and I just felt the urge to do this. That shows what you stand for, Sohail. And I want to see that character. Like, remember how I showed you that one slide where Tosca had that thing, uh, you know, I want to, like, she actually talks about saying, okay, this is your application. This is who you are. And she goes to Harvard, okay? She was like, as an admissions officer, I want to feel connected to you to a point where I'm like, I want to walk with you. I want to go for a coffee with you. I want to, I want to take you under my wings. That's how an admissions officer has to feel nice about you. It's all about, it's a fluffy game. It's not as, it's not as I's daughter and T's crossed as you think it is. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else such as any questions? Uh uh, Paul, I think we need to attend it. We already have five minutes extra over the uh, well, time. But... I, I sent you guys my details and, uh, I put them in the chat, did I? Did I put them in the chat? I, did, I also the shared chat. it on our WhatsApp group too, so. Okay, sounds so, good. So yeah, if anybody, anybody yeah. needs any questions, just, you know, WhatsApp me, and then so much better to answer WhatsApp than over here. But, uh, you know, stay in touch, guys. Good luck. Thank you for giving me a chance to present, and uh, thank you, Naren, for the, the heart. And, uh, no, this is great. I'm glad you guys connected with me. Take care. Bye now. See you. Thank you so much, Apollo. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah.